Alright, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Ford Lockdown Laps 2020 final at Bathurst. We are using GR3 Mustangs for GT Sport. That is the GT3 Mustang. It is a one-make race. We are going to switch over to the action shortly. The guys are busy running a uh, practice session. But in the meantime, I would like to introduce to me, uh, everyone my co-caster for this event, the founder of Logistical Nightmare Racing, Mr. Sean Buck, Sharks Forever. How are you doing, Sean? I don't hear a shot. So for now, it's just going to be me. I'm going to jump to the live uh, action of the guys practicing. As you can see, Mr. Sunburnt Donkey, he's been an absolute powerhouse this uh, this race. So has Mr. Kalen Pace. They have been an absolute dominant force in this uh, race so far. Kalen obviously pulling over. I think he wants to jump back to the pit lane. Um, as you can see as well, Sunburnt uh, Donkey, he's powering it down the Conrad straight at the moment, heading up to the chase. Um, we're currently just waiting for the server to jump over to the um, to the qualifying session. So for now, we enjoy the um, the, the post action, the uh, practice action. So, one of the reasons we wanted to obviously choose um, such a prestigious circuit for uh, this race was obviously the steep, steep history it has with Mustang racing. Not particularly this Mustang that you see powering on the circuit, but uh, you know some of these incredible machi machines that you just really have to pay absolute respect for. So, I mean, it's going to be an incredible race with the... Uh, with the guys out there. For now, folks, I'm going to leave you with a little bit of the sights and sounds of the cars. We go over to qualifying in approximately seven minutes' time. So in uh, seven minutes, we are going to go live. For now, I'm going to be jumping around. We are here, but uh, for now, we're just going to, uh, yeah, leave you with the cars. Joined by Mr. Sharks. Hello, Sean. It is also worth mentioning to everyone who is currently watching out there that the gentleman I am over right now, Kalen Pace, has actually, uh, he is the maximum point scorer, he leads the points if they meant anything now, this is obviously fresh start, winner takes all kind of race, but he he has been the real dominant force in this one, um, 
he uh, won everything that he was thrown at him, and I think it drifted in some uh, some instances by upwards of seven to eight seconds ahead of the car in front of him. So someone to definitely watch for this race. That is the five minute uh, mark for qualifying from the uh, uh, server host, Mr. AJ Leo. Big thanks to him, big shout out to him for being a host. He's been a host since round one, offering to, uh, his services to host the final as well. Who you're looking at now, ladies and gentlemen, is uh, Denied Prophet. He is currently one half of the uh, LNR champion, uh, championship winning team, should I say. Their their team uh, is the second win in a row, second season in a row that they've uh, that they've won, and the third overall win for the team. So so far, it looks like one of the most successful teams within that respective community. He's obviously come here looking to to show what he's made of. So also hoping for big things. And uh, side note, my oldest friend. So, personal good luck for me to Mr. Denied Prophet. Um, I'm really hoping he, he throws some thunder here at probably his worst tracks. So, so good luck to him. for Mr. Denied. And track maintenance is important, obviously. In the meantime, folks, we're going to go back over to the cover screen. Obviously, we're going to go over to some back-end stuff. The, the mode I'm in is going to be thrown out into a rather unpleasant-looking uh, lobby screen. So for now, we're going to leave you with a fantastic little local Ford Performance uh, Ford South Africa Mustang. That's an absolute beauty. It was used in the, uh, the press releases for the whole uh, tournament, actually. So... You know, real, real good looking little car. And the EKZ livery is actually loosely based on the livery you're looking at right now, so. I am so sorry. I think that is a Sean. Hello, Sean. Hello, sorry. Technical, <laughs> difficulties. <laughs> Technical difficulties in the in the age of Corona. It's just all, it's just all what it's what it's about so thank you for joining me last minute join had a couple uh, scheduling difficulties with my regular co-caster george uh, g Matt smith uh he uh regrets to not be able to uh, make it tonight but he or today but he's actually going to be casting the six hours of barcelona for rci a little bit later so he's obviously got his casting duties um myself being the event organizer going uh doing this my casting duties leave me here that little ting that you hear is the qualifying session starting so any second now you're going to hear the roar of engines as the drivers pull away. Um, new person out on the server on the track at the moment is Silver Mist. So you're going to have a couple guys coming onto this track. We'll jump over once they're actually moving. But now tell me, Sean, your your impressions of Bathurst? What do you what do you feel about them? How do you feel? How do you feel about this track? Hello, Sean. Have we lost Sean again? I think we've lost Sean again, folks. All right. Well. My personal feelings on this track, I'm just going gonna, gonna to throw it out there if anyone's interested in my opinion as the, the humble event organizer of said event. Uh, I love this track. 
the personal reasons for choosing it aside, um, obviously the Ford racing history here, but I want easily one of my favorite tracks in the world. Um, it's going to be one of my stables and probably, yeah, I, I'd, I'd class it in my top five of tracks. So, I mean, as we, as we head out onto the track, uh, currently the first person out is Barry. So he's most likely going to be our first person to set a flyer. We're going to hang around, hang out with him for a couple of minutes until he is obviously ready to make his flyer. But while we do that, why don't we have a little rundown through the grid of actually he's going to be joining us today. We've got Barry's 150, he's first out. Monk ZA, he's currently second out in the circuit. Uh, F -A Z A Ghost Killmax, guys, apologies if I'm getting your name wrong. Uh, I haven't had a chance to sometimes actually learn all your names properly. There have been so many of you. Kalen Pace, he's in fourth out on the track at the moment. Sunburnt Donkey, he's out in fifth. C L V, uh, v P L M. Uh, I'm gonna have to figure out something for you. I'm gonna just call you. I'm gonna call you Caliper from now on. Uh, that seems to be so. Caliper, he's in number six. Uh, dynamic Gene, he finds himself in number s in uh, the seventh spot, but again, it's just only the outlap of this track. So I mean, I wouldn't put much stock into where they are now. These are obviously going to change. Vermista, he finds himself in the eighth place slot out in the, on the track. Silvermist in ninth. Marianus VW in tenth, and Deny Prophet, he finds himself coming up, only finishing the hill straight now. So we're going to expect big things from him. He's got a lot of clean track to do do some stuff here. I applaud you for calling some of these boys PSA it was names a out. tough one, hey? Like, I, I read it beforehand and I went, all right, I know this thing. And then I read it again and my brain just went, no. So uh, after 40 minutes, I think I'll have it done. <laughs> so yeah, we go back to my, my earlier question. Give me Give me some of your impressions of this track. Well, you, you reckon it was one of your favorites somewhere along the line of the top five, top ten. I honestly think it is one of the most difficult courses that I've struggled with, even in the line of any sim racing, simulation gaming. I think the guys that actually do the Bathurst Challenge, it has to be so daring, so scary, because to me, personally, the minute you go on top of that hill, it is either a good ending or a disaster one of the two it's fairly rare for me just personally just put up three good laps down there and i don't know how these boys are going to do it but this is going to be a challenge for them well it's one of the reasons i've set ghosting to such a high extent is not because i don't have faith in these guys racing abilities but you know i i, I, I created back to watching an australian uh, celebrity event during the early stages of their lockdown and it was chaos, pure carnage. I think it was an eye racing, and I don't think they finished one race without at least six people getting caught up somewhere on the mountain. So it's it's that exact thing. And then you look at the real life racing. I think it was last year. It was actually at the beginning of 2020, the running of it. That Lamborghini who had the crash coming through uh, the top of Skyline there. I mean, that was that was a very serious accident that that boy had. So you look at the speeds these guys do on this track. It's it's no it's no doubt it's an incredibly dangerous circuit, but. Man, the the just pure joy and exhilaration you get when you're barreling it down the bottom, like coming out the bottom of the hill. Once you make it out Forest's elbow and you're heading back down the Conrad Strait, there's, yeah, I love his track. So a little, a little bit of a gushy gushy moment for me. This is a, a real special place. Uh, and this armoral, this armoral section. There's no corner that's more. Oh, Barry's having a fresh pit entry there. A little bit of ghosting guiding him in. So, it's not how you want to take your your pit lane. Well, the uh, the other good thing is, is we don't. There's a simulation, so the guys can go seriously into it, and we don't have live kangaroos or animals jumping across the roadway. So, that's a pleasant positive. That's a big positive. You know, you don't have to worry about that wildlife thing. I think the only thing you need to worry about is the occasional spinning car. But hopefully, with the settings and places they are, we're not going to have to worry about that too much. So well, the guys. Yeah, sorry. No, carry on. No, no, I was just going to go and say that, that, that practically the only two places to do good passing maneuvers is on Mountain Strait and, of course, coming down on Conrad. So those are your two angles that, for, from a racing point of view, these boys are probably going to tackle severely um, uh, angle and, and see if they can do it. Uh, mountain passes, not happening, man. If they can no. pull it off, I'll be phenomenally shocked. Yeah. And I mean, you, you and I have been uh, dabbling in some more PC-based sims where, let's be honest, ghosting just 
that it's just not a part of the game. They haven't physically written that element into their into their simulators. So, you know, what you expect these guys to perform at in, on this particular you know title is going to be quite something. I mean, even with the ghosting settings, passing opportunities are not going to exist here. And we see this currently with the guys on screen. I mean, we've got the top three runners still running in a little bit of a chain or in a train from each other. Um, I mean, they're... <laughs> this is what it's going to be like like you said coming down the conrad straight setting it up for the chase it's going to be a bit of a slip maneuver hopefully you know no one blinks coming in through the chase and last of the late breakers coming in through that hellishly fast left and right so yeah it's it's going to be it's going to be an interesting one to say the least yeah Tell every me corner i look i squint <laughs> It's to me you either gonna make a corner or break it one of the two. <laughs> there, there, there's no, there's no other mindset that you have to go into it. It's no. In it to win it or, or coasting as what I call the safe zone. Yes, 100%. You know, there's. Um, I just want to quickly point out, folks, if there is a little bit of a, a janky janky on screen, it's a, a limitation issue we have streaming to the console as we are right now. Uh, I do apologize, but as you see, it does correct itself quite quickly. So if there are future ones, we will be able to hopefully write it quite quickly as we see Denied Prophet collecting a fair amount of the wall as he comes in <laughs> through the scariest section of the circuit, bar none. So we got a good mixture here, man. Ideally, good good amount of fuel wear, good amount of tire wear. Some of the guys, it does look like they're probably burning a bit more fuel. Some of the guys probably went on new fresh tires so that they can get the maximum out of these cars around the corners, coming yep. into every corner, especially on top of the mountain. Um, but I see Sunburn Donkey taking the lead so far. And I think there's, what, like three or four minutes left from what I gathered? Looks like we're at two and a half minutes left, pretty much on the dot. Uh, it's going to be an interesting one to see if the guys can pull anything out of it. I mean, I mean, we both know Donkey has some some serious pace. He he can really really bring it. So it's going to be interesting to see what the guys, yeah, you know, how they how they answer what he's what he's bringing. Phenomenal pace, man. That 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 guy has made a marker in sim racing South Africa since he kicked up. Um, I've only seen him on some some racing series it's early 2020. I've, I've never heard of him even prior to this. Well, and I think he started off with a controller as well, or does he still have one? I think he might still have it. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I, I dare ask questions from him sometimes because when he gives me the answer, I'm like, really? You mean you really are this fast doing that? Like, really? So he obviously is a uh, contributor for the... Um, Chatterbox, the GT Sports show, that's, uh, that web show that's sprung up. He makes their lap guides. So, I mean, a, a real trusted source of information when it comes to the circuits. And always got some really solid advice. Oh, Barry's coming in out qualifying him, but by just... Sandberg broke it again. Look at that. Well, you see, I think we, we, we're settling on a potential one to watch. Berries and uh, Sunburnt Donkey look like they're going to be bringing some very serious pace to this, uh, to this lockdown laps final. Um... You know, everyone, everyone been asking me from the Ford side, who do you think is going to win? Who do you think is going to win? And my answer's been the same. I don't know. I'd love to be able to put money on it, but I, I just don't know. If, if it was any other given track, I would probably put my money on a guy. But placing them in this track, this environment, I, I would probably agree with you there. Um, even the background from these boys, the history that we know of, it, it's very tough to say. Sunburn's yeah. new to sim racing. Mm -hmm. He's on a controller. I'm assuming you assume he's hellishly quick. Um, and again, it brings you that dynamic of GT Sport that you can go in with either a wheel rig setup or do what this guy does on a controller and then be phenomenally quick. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think that's a testament really to what a pickup and play GT Sport can be. It's no matter who you are, no matter your uh, your limitations or your budget you can really get into a game like this and it's kind of something i've you know stressed from the very early on as we go into the last literal five seconds of qualifying um you know anyone can do this as gt sport has has put into the title it's it's the it's the every person's game so everyone should be driving it's, it's it informs everyone to drive and everything. These guys right now bombing it around uh, in GT3 Mustangs, but if they wanted, they could go and take the road version. They could go and take the 1970s Fossback version if they wanted to. 
the options are endless. And the track's yours, and the fuel's free, so why not? If not, why not, huh? If not, well, why not? Well, eating, eating back on the background, so we, we got sunburned new to the sim racing screen. Barry sitting in second place at this moment, challenging for that, that ultimate goal. I don't think he's going to get it. Um, and his background's from Project Cars. So yeah. there you're talking about two different dynamics of a sim racing game platform. And look at the pace these boys bring out. No, absolutely. It's it's quite scary actually when you when you think about what's just here in this race and what these eleven guys are gonna be competing for is not only just this G twenty nine a um a, a chance to actually have a proper, you know, sim to seat experience with a proper Ford driver, but you've also got the chance to win some Ford merch. So the top three guys are going for something. As we're at one, we are go and we are live for the Ford Lockdown Laps 2020 final. Just like that, four weeks of racing is concluded with the first corner here, the whole corner being smashed out by all the guys. Is everyone getting away quickly? We've got I think Mariana's he's running a little bit wide coming through Hell Corner. Looks like everyone's made it away cleanly, running uphill straight, uh, mountain straight, pardon, apologies. But look at this, three, four cars all duking it out for the same little stretch of, of track. Like you said, passing opportunities are going to be rare. They're not going to be commonplace on a track like this. No, uh, and Griffiths, if you don't do the Griffiths corner properly, it's going to squeeze you out. We're just going to lose momentum coming up the hill. And we can see that happening with Berries that just went just too wide on there, and he's lost three, four positions. No, absolutely. It's, it's, it's a real tough one because momentum is now so critical. Momentum and rhythm. It's all about the rhythm coming up this hill. And if you lose it coming through that first Griffin's Bend through the cutting, it's going to hurt you. It's going to hurt you coming the whole way up this hill. Anything happening here, guys look like they're setting into a good little train coming through the top of Skyline and running into the dipper. Folks, apologies about that little bit of frame rate loss there. Sunburnt Donkey, Sunburnt Donkey's pulling out a commanding lead at this early stage. He has kept it well together. 1.5 seconds ahead of our man in second place, Monk ZA. And Barry's hot on his tail here. Shark's impression so far, that first lap, we're about to hit the Conrad straight. A little bit of a breather for some of these drivers, I'm sure. Definitely, that, that would have probably settled the nerves. Or heart pounding, either or. They, I, I can see the boys were slightly unsettled coming up the mountain. That gives Sunburnt that... 1.5 second lead, so he just closed his eyes, looked forward, didn't look in his rear view mirror, whereas everyone else was probably more aware of what was going on around yeah. him, and he had open track, and that shows. Ah, oh, 100%. It does show a little bit of contact from the looks of things between uh, FZA and Denied... Uh, F ZA, apologies, and Denied Profit. Nothing race-ending, a little bit of rubbing. Uh, heard Profit on a little bit of speed as we're potentially going to go... Th <laughs> we're going to go too deep here into Murray's corner coming down the start-finish straight. Um, Sharks, I don't know if you're aware of this from the start-finish uh, start straight of this track. There are two separate start and finish points for this track because it's so short and the sheer number of cars they run on this grid. The start point is actually further down the straight than its end point. So, uh, That's uh, true. Yeah, nice little interesting one. We don't experience it in this game as 12 cars can happily sit on the grid before the line, but and mm. real real life racing cars sometimes forming well after Murray's corner so that that later start point required yes so you, you so real racing has that later start point where GD Sport has sort of combined both of them um, giving you that extra one two seconds a lap um, comparing that to other different simulation games you can see the vast difference but again nothing wrong with it this gives perfect dynamics for the guys to race they can put good solid laps on let's see if they can just get settled down pull the nerves back breathe a little bit like like a like a fellow friend would normally tell me do three deep breaths and then three good laps and if you get that rhythm right everything is clear for a way oh 100 percent something um, my early you know karting coaches and stuff would tell me is driving ang angry or driving panicky never works for anyone calm it down take some deep breaths and just get the job done you know it's all it really needs um a little bit of a race forming back here from from seventh and on guys look like they're gonna be swapping out position Vimister looks like he's had a fantastic exit um though i could be wrong it looks like he's losing a bit of delta split to the car in front of him so it's gonna be a very very interesting one to see how these guys settle out because there's a little bit of a train forming in the later race but if you look at sunburn donkey 2.5 seconds i mean it's only the second lap so let's hope the guys can have something in answer for him maybe a couple of the guys have some strategy that they can throw throw at him 
But, again, this is a man who's proven quite, as he gets a little bit squirrely on the exit of, of the main straight. Well, we just had berries that passed monk underscore Z right there. Exactly. Um, so the question comes into play, uh, uh, berries who had had his little incident in, in lab one, probably went in too deep into Griffith, um, lost his momentum going up the hill, had a set of cars passing him, and now gained all those positions back, so he's fighting for the win. You can see the man's on a charge. Um, he just passed Monk in, in, in the, the downward straight, so can he catch up? Will he be able to? Or are these boys are going to fight it and then lose more delta to, to Sunburn? you got to wonder, where is Silver Mist for this one? Silver Mist, he's also got a bit of a battle forming here. So these two battles that have formed, you know, it's for second position and for fourth position here, they're only going to help Sunburnt at the end of the day, really. He's now just going to have some clean track, get the job done, and do the, the consistent thing. I mean, 203 already. 203 already. At this early stage of the game, carrying so much fuel, you can only imagine what he's going to be like with 10 minutes to, to go in the race when he's running on a bit of an empty attack. Perfectness, man. That's, that's all he needs is the guy behind him, everyone else behind him, they must battle. If they battle, he gains. That's yeah. pure, tactical, clever driving. Uh, if the boys behind them pick it up, they can work together and potentially catch up on two. But who's to say that they are thinking in that way? Oh no, I think right now in these, what is this, we're in the first lap of this race. So I think at this point in time, what we're going to see is mostly guys just trying to find that pace. They're going to be trying to find that, that rhythm. You know, I see Denied, he's sitting back here lurking like a shark playing his Jaws music like he d likes to do. I, he's just probably playing it calculated, smooth, calm, and collected. It's still 33 minutes left of this race, so it's not over. It never is. And again, like you said, calculated. That, that's like fuel-saving opportunities coming down each straight. Short shifting, taking it easy, don't overthrottle. Long yeah. game, long game is potential. Yeah. Well, essentially, this is a little bit of a mini endurance race with tire and fuel settings as they are. The guys are going to be having to think about a couple of those things. For if you if you look, for example, as we switch over to the car uh, view of what the guys are running with, you can really see lap four, and we're seeing a little bit of fuel wear, uh, or should I say, quite a bit of fuel consumption, and a little bit of tire wear. So uh, a stop is almost guaranteed for the cars. The guys are, are going to be making a stop. So. It's just a matter of when, really. And this is also opening the door for undercuts. What's Donkey's uh, strategy? You know, he, in one of the final races, came through, I believe it was actually your one of your finals, came through with the um, latest pit stop. I think it was like in the last lap he came in and pitted for a little bit of fresh rubber and some fuel, just so he made it to the end, basically. Mm. Yeah, we, we, we're too early to, to, to guess what these boys are going to do. Uh, based on all the experience and racing we've done, yeah, you would probably want to save fuel as much as you can. Don't overdo it on your tires. Um, get the most grip out of it as best as you can. Be easy here and there. Follow a guy. Don't battle him because at the end of the day, the more you fight the guy ahead of you, the more time you lose. Um, so that all those tactical things has to run through their heads. they they got to be thinking it. But again, we, we mid-back boys. These mid-back boys always race so hard so hard yeah well i think that's where where the the, the action's actually going to be because if we have a look at sunburn donkey 4.2 seconds um i'm 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 kind of gonna go ahead and say it's his to lose right now this is he set himself up in a position where he he just needs to not lose it just keep it together keep that 4.7 second lead that he has now but berries berries found himself a little bit of clean air and he's used it 1.5 seconds to the man behind him monk He's also got a good little bit of breathing room to the gentleman in fourth position. But from fourth position, this is where things get interesting. Mr. Ghost over here, he's going to have an interesting one because right behind him, Silver Mist, he's going to be hard charging. Vimista, he's right on his tail. I mean, all of these guys in each other's slip. They're towing each other around. Seventh position, we've got Denied Profit. Dynamic Gene, he's in eighth position. Again, mate, you're going to have to contact me after the race and explain to me how the series of letters, how it's pronounced Caliper. Uh, I'm going to go with that one. Uh, Mr. VW over here, he's in 10th position. And Mr. KLM Pace, 
you know, we haven't given him much screen time, and he was a real strong one to watch. I would really love to actually get a sense of what happened to him after this race, because he just dropped off the radar, and he's in sitting in, in last place at the moment. Or has he had a pit stop? Doesn't look well, like he's had that stop. Doesn't look like it either. Again, I raised an outbrow when, when they started the race, because he started at the back of the grid. Which was very strange for me to see, knowing where he comes from, knowing what pace this man has. I mean, he doesn't have a name KLM pace by the, for the sake of it. He is phenomenally quick. So, did, was he out qualified? Um, was, was he lazy and uh, just didn't qualify and decided to just kind of take it as it comes? Um, you know, I know a couple of these guys, it's been a long, it's been a long lockdown of racing. There's been some, as you and I'm sure I can attest sim racing's exploded so the sim racing opportunities have been rife during this lockdown and a couple of the guys feeling a bit tired I know one of our finalists actually hasn't shown London Express he expressed to the admin group just I don't think he has the energy he just may not show he's going to see how he feels a little bit later you know missing out on family time is becoming a big factor for some of these guys with the amount of racing that they're doing so i dare say considering how he's pulling his way through the field since we jumped onto him uh, i'm gonna i'm gonna hazard a guess at maybe he just didn't sit in the seat for quali he just took the opportunity to take a couple extra minutes and get his thoughts together you know true that that's that's a very good possibility but i do agree with you some some racing has exploded in 2020 uh, COVID-19 has brought a, a different platform dynamic. Um, it advanced the level of sim racing by at least two or three years from where it was. Um, and again, the, the, the individuals and the business entities and those people that, that help us promote sim racing, you know, big ups to them, man. I, I'd even step down and go like, thank you for this is phenomenal. Oh yeah, that's where I was essentially going to lead to because I mean we we cannot understate the incredible competition that Ford has essentially given me the opportunity to put on. I said the same thing during the Chatterbox interview that I was, you know, lucky enough to do. Where this is actually something we don't see in South Africa. A a genuine, you know, motor company like Ford, a big brand company, coming along and not only saying it's free. Hey everyone, come along and sign up. All you have to do is tell this jealous guy your information. But, you know, come along and, and, and do some racing and you can win something at the end of it. Not just your name on a, on a, on a website, not just a, a, a little mention here and there and some bragging rights. Physical prizes with no entry fee required. And, and it's a testament to the 174 people I had signed up to this. That is a big thank you to Ford from my side as a, as a sim racing enthusiast that this, this wouldn't have happened without their direct backing. I could have never put on something to this magnitude without their backing. So... Uh, truly, truly thankful to them for getting involved as they have. Yeah, realistically, their cars are phenomenal. Oh man, I love the '80s. I love the Mustangs. I love the sound of the Mustangs. And we're driving here with Mustangs on GT Sport at Bathurst, 40-minute race with the top oaks from South Africa. This just cannot get better. Yeah, no, I, I couldn't agree more. It's, it's one of my favorite cars, hands down. I think going through all its lineage lines of every iteration of the car going all the way back to like the 67 Fastback racing Mustang I've had the pleasure of working on with Thomas Faulkner um, you know his actual racing car to getting into enjoy this and it's actually quite funny that the, my uh, the complex across the road from us one of the people that lives in there has one of these big loud shouty shouty Ford Mustang GTs and he can he can wake Kai up at two three in the morning. My eleven month year old, I just that that car just sounds incredible. Every every time he pulls in, he pulls in like a bit of a wally. But man, what a car! Well, I'm looking at how the boys are happen happening now. Sorry, I started no there worries. for a moment. No We're problem. heading now what in lap seven. KLM yeah. is climbing the leaderboard slowly. I mean, I can actually see his name pop up and appear where I didn't at the beginning of the race. But looking at just at the map itself, something Donkey's still going far away. Berries does look like he's a way ahead of his third component, Monk. So, big gaps in the front leaders. Yeah. It's all up to them whether they win or lose it. From there on, it doesn't seem like anyone behind them are actually in close proximity to challenge it. Uh, but then again, we, we're still talking about pit stops. We're still talking about tire changes. So, uh, what are the boys going to do? What, what yeah. strategies are we potentially seeing? One stop, two stop, three stop? I don't know. 
Well, it was, it was quite uh, it was quite funny when I um, when I started testing for this. <coughs> I, I, I did a solid forty minutes and a little bit out of practice with GT Sport. I wasn't the smoothest with a car like the Mustang sitting on the on the medium tires. And in forty minutes, I was forced to do three realistic pit stops. And I thought to myself, okay, this is this is me, bit of heavy handed, you know, not having driven much since the uh, as we see Kalen Pace further making his way up the field, just carving his way through these guys, potentially moving up to sixth here if he can hold it together for the chase. Looks like he's going to be able to make it stick though. Um, yeah, that's that, that's a definite boss coming yeah. down uh, with a slipstream, easy clean cut, take it on either left or right side. Uh, you you only have one position to defend, and it's it's really up to the passing defending driver to do as best as he can to keep it behind. But that's very difficult. Yeah, well, I think he's he's managed to make his way past nice and cleanly. I think once he it's all going to be really the driver that comes out this corner that's going to cement his six uh, six spot because dynamic he's right in the slip. And all depending on their drive out is going to depend on whether they can actually make anything stick through Griffins. So if exactly. Pace can keep it together now, he's going to have it waxed for the mountain. But he's going to have to keep it together because mountain straight's a lot longer than it, <laughs> than it looks. <laughs> As you come over that rise, you think to yourself, oh God, there's still more. There's still more. Exactly. Well, he did, he did very tactical there, very well. He kept the car front, kept the car adrift. Uh, he's, he's dynamic. If I pronounce it correctly, didn't really challenge him at all. So maybe struggling a bit on the tire, maybe struggling a bit on the grip. Um, these boys are thinking, or too much pressure. Or too much pressure. You know, like a, a pace like, or a name like Pace, you know, when you look at what he did in the earlier rounds, you've got to be aware of his dominance in those early things. I mean, he's he may not have, you know, had the best of starts for this race for intensive purposes, but his name cannot be ignored for when it, you look at he's the highest point scorer on the board. Hands down. Upright, he is in first place. Oh, coming down, forest elbow. <laughs> this corner, this corner. There's so many ways to get it in, but they always tell you smooth, simple, don't over break, don't lock, miss the wall. And you, you can make so many mistakes in that small time frame over there. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's one of those those corners that's real make or break. Again, one of my favorite tracks, always going to watch it when the Intercontinental GT does its thing. And you look at that pass in 2019 that uh, Porsche pulled in that like in the last ditch moments. It's the kind of corner where you can make that kind of move. It's if you get the if you get the run, you can make it stick. But if you don't, it's a tough one here. You saying that just makes me shake my head. <laughs> as a as a as a Track. Bentley. Yeah, as a Bentley driver in ACC, I also have to shake my head at that because you try that maneuver, you're going to end up in that Bentley tire wall there. So, <laughs> no, probably not the best of ideas. So we had now two individuals that I saw popping into the boat. Um, Fuel-wise, they look at it about one plus minus 33%, which in honest view is not enough for the remainder of the race. No. So definite fuel stop is needed. Um, tires questionable oh denied there with a slight penalty yeah probably milk it off at the other point so does uh, who's behind him fza yeah had to look there for a second i know it's a bit of a tough one because the, these cameramen have to work so hard to keep up with these cars coming through the top section of, of uh, skyline here so Denied looks like he's potentially that penalty not going to hurt him too much. I see they're sitting on uh, FZA is sitting on zero zero, so is denied. So oh, he's zero uh, zero point two. So I'm pretty sure they're going to be able to work that off. You know, tap it off a little bit during the chase and it will disappear. Yeah, just a little bit of wall bending penalties is what I would call it. Again, there's no runoff on most of the side of the track here, especially going up and around the mountain. Coming down, you have space to your left and to your right but going up there's very little and even if you do take a bit of that space that is available for you you're either going to hit the wall or spin out or go into the gravel zone uh, there by uh, is it Griffin? Uh, through oh. the dipper through the dipper yes yeah, yeah. Uh, you know it's, it's actually something uh, a term my uh, good friend GMAX who obviously couldn't be here with us today he's got his RCI duties but uh, a beautiful term as we see denied 
collecting oh. some gravel coming into the pit lane that is not going to help his efforts mm. but prime example collecting a bit of turbo grass there it doesn't help you when you're driving on these completely slick tires as you can see him pulling in it's not going to do you any favors when you collect a little bit of not tarmac so you know you, you see it there in prime example as the guys are coming past looks like denied's going for a bit of an undercut or an undercut or he could be going for a two-stopper so it's gonna be interesting to see where's he gonna come out it would be good to figure out because again it does look like with this whole pit stop thing KLM pace out KLM pace pit stop undercut these two boys FZA and Denied Prophet because yeah. he was sitting behind them before the pit stop entries and then he went into a lap earlier and now came out ahead of them yeah no this is a uh, little bit of his uh, his racing experience coming through he might be low down but I think we're going to see some big things coming out from him um, obviously what we're seeing now is a grid order that is in perspective of their uh, their actual current positions because people are off obviously lead lap and, and you know some guys haven't uh, put it but let's go from the beginning and do a rundown as I embarrass myself a little bit more with these guys names um, Sunburnt Donkey he finds himself with a commanding lead you know eight seconds I think really at this point I can emphasize it's his to lose he's gonna find himself hard pressed to, to make a mistake considering how clean he's been Berry's second position also massive lead to the man behind him as he enters the chase you can see the distance that these guys have on each other Monk ZA uh, he's also now coming through the uh, the Conrad Strait approaching the chase you can just you know, understand the speed these guys get up to here if I remember correctly these guys are doing excess of about 270 coming through the the chase there uh, so it's a you know lots of space between them oh pit stop we see a pit stop pit from stops. our pit stops. this is gonna be an interesting one to see from where these guys end up now because I think knowing how quick GT Sport pit stops actually are um, you know, that's Monk taking the lead, but how much space is he actually going to get on these guys? Exactly. That that is that is an interesting tactic because he hasn't gone into the pits yet. So no. Was he fuel saving? Is his tires a lot better? Because anything can happen. Well, if you have a look at the current tire wear and fuel that he's showing, um, you know, obviously one of the beautiful things that we get to see with uh, some racing is the. You know, we actually get to see this kind of information. I think we're going to see a, a next a box this lap. I, I don't think Monk is going to have the tires or fuel, frankly, to actually stay out a further lap. As we see, you know, Sunburnt Donkey sitting right, right on him. So that pit stop definitely worked for Sunburn's favor. He's going to take his lead right, right back. If not earlier, he might actually catch him before the be uh, before the pit stop even happens. You know, with these fresh tires of his, and he's on mediums. That's true, that's true. But now the worrisome view in Sunburn's eye is, is Monk going to slow him down? Because it's easier for him to catch up. Monk will have a lot of understeer going through all these high-speed corners because of the amount of tire wear that he's lost. And then that allows berries to catch up sneakily little by little. Maybe not a knot, but it is, is there. And there we see it. Sunburn Donkeys is at the back of Monk. So he's losing precious time at this moment. I think he's going to have a chat. Definitely a faster line through there to take that later apex. And I think, you know, um, Monk's going to be, have to be careful here. He can't over defend. He's had his single move. He's got to commit to the outside of that circuit now. That's going to give Sunbird Donkey the inside through the chase. And I think Donkey now just has to be the one who blinks last. And he's going to have it. He has it. That's the that's the move he was looking for. So before the lap is even done, we have Sunburn Donkey taking the lead for this final the lockdown mm. laps. You know, if we don't see a second pit stop here from Donkey, I think we could be looking at a, a, a really commanding lead. And there we go, Monk into the pit lane. He goes. Is he going to collect some grass? A little bit of corner cutting there. Obviously, GT Sport, you know, doesn't, Allows. doesn't, doesn't care too much about pit lane entry regulations. So, so what does that delta look now between Sunburn and Berries? That's a 2.2. Oh, that was an 8 second commanding lead. Uh, I think so. I think Berry's did some really solid work to fuel save there. I think he. I think once he got past this guy and he got himself up into second, I think it was really just a case of, all right, do what I got to do. Short shift, 
make sure I'm not revving the nuts out of this Mustang because it's easy to rev it, hey? Those first two gears are so short in this car. They're muscle gear, muscle car short. They're just whap, whap, and they're done. So, you know, he's going to be real hard pressed to make sure, especially coming through the cutting like this, that he's, he's shifting early, shifting early coming up the section, which I don't think something Donkey was doing. He was probably pulling the ringer out of it, making sure he opened that, that lead. Yes. Now, now Berries is going to be all over him because Sunburn probably lost a bit of time. Um, Berries did probably have uh, a bit of extra fuel coming into the pit. Oh, so that's a spin. Oh, Sunburn just collect, collecting some turbo grass coming through the top of Skyline there. The entry to Dipper did him no favors, but that's it. That's Berries into the into the first place slot. Definitely gonna have hurt his tires there because at that speed you're gonna have some serious tire wear added onto <laughs> with these fuels with these tire settings. So, you know, comment curse of the commentator. I think there's Sean, you and I may be talking a little bit too much about him, but that's uh, that is an unfortunate one that we see coming out there for uh, Sunburn Donkey. Definitely not what you want to see happen <laughs> at the stage of the game. I now need to go get my nail clipper because I almost chewed my nails off there for a second. <laughs> He did good to recover there, there's that little bit of a pirouette, he's still in it, 1.8 seconds, he's definitely still in the running for it, so we might potentially be looking at a bit of a knife fight for the rest of these 15 minutes, because that's it, 15 minutes remain of this final winner-take-all event, Lockdown Lap 2020, sponsored obviously completely by Ford South Africa, they have done a stellar job bringing sim racing uh, an absolute ton of exposure, so, you know, an event like this just would not be possible. Exactly, less with less than 15 minutes to go he just had a spin out on uh, at the top so now it's a mental challenge does he overcome that mentally and look at that girl and pace fighting with... for third i know i think i think we're going to see something quite biblical here if you actually have a look at what he's about to pull off even if the man oh a little bit of a contact there between the two of them nothing too serious though a little bit of connection of the grass but if klm can continue in this fashion even if he scores a top five at this rate, that is going to be quite spectacular to come from the back of the grid to do what he's done here. And Mr. Monk is all the way down to seventh position. So staying out longer, trying to push for a longer thing, seemed to have hurt him. But then again, he probably is on a fresher tire now, has got a little bit less fuel, so he can potentially challenge coming up. But again, that's going to be a hard challenge. KLM Pace has got third place at this moment, so that's a third podium. Yeah, and that's that's some solid merch if you can keep it together. Some f and you know, KLM he loves his he loves his racing his racing merch. So I'm pretty sure he'd be chuffed with that. I would say no to it, but he I don't think a man like uh, Mr. Kalen is is content with uh, third. If he can make up 11 seconds in 13 minutes and 20 seconds, I I don't know. I think EKZ is going to have to. I have to give him something special for that one because that's a that's the drive of the century right there. Well, I I'm calling a driver of the day because to me he started at the back of the pit, back of the grid, went through all of these guys from the back from 40 minutes to 13, setting in a potential podium of third place, and and he's still racing. That yeah. is a lot that he made up. And we still see the, the, the fastest lap coming in through um, from Sunburn Donkey. But I'm going to switch over to our cover page quickly so I can get over to our uh, uh, timetable. Because I really want to see what the timetable is looking like at this current point in time. Um, so as you can see currently up on screen, you can see who's doing some really awesome deltas. Um, you know, who's, who's going... Uh, Vimy still looks like he has an absolute cracker of a third sector. It looks like he's by far the fastest through the third, third sector. But there we go, Sunburn Donkey, you know, just the overall deltas as you can see through the various sectors, he is definitely going to hold down that fastest lap. But, fastest lap is not far off from Berries. If he can continue this, he could take that spot for himself as well. Yeah, top two, the only two boys running 202s. Exactly. So, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to leave it on this because what we get to see is a little bit of both. And, uh, you know, it's got a lot of information up on screen, so I'll be swapping between the two. But this gets to show everyone just an illustration of how, for example, someone like Pace, who came a little bit came in a little bit earlier, um, you know, he's currently sitting on half a tank of fuel. Tires, he's doing good. I think he's I think he's definitely being quite patient with the car, being very gentle with the car as his tire is showing. But then you have a, a look at... Um, you know, Sunburnt, who's put, put it a little bit later, 
some fresh rubber and a little bit more fuel, that could that could really serve him for the next pit stop. So it's going to really come down to that one to see what happens mm. next. Have to figure out what Barry says. He's probably plus or minus, give or take, the same point. I would think he probably is. Yeah, round about the same between the two of them. So. I think, I mean, 1.3 seconds between these two. This is going to be one to watch. If they get any closer to each other, they're going to be like gravity. They're just going to pull each other in, and it's just going to get closer and closer and closer. But let's have a run through the field, see if we can find any battles forming elsewhere. Oh, as we switch over to Denied Prophet, potentially having a move made on him by Monk. I wonder what could have caused that as they get up to the chase. I think Monk's going to have enough to make it stick side by side. Denied Prophet's potentially going to have it for the cutback, though. Let's see what he can do. No, forcing himself onto that outside oh, no. line. Mm, that outside yeah. line did him no favors. No favors at all. Made made sure that he went a little bit wide coming out of that corner. Probably predicted it. Stop stop the night in the tracks from from making a further move and coming back onto. Yeah. And a guy like denied he's dangerous, but I mean self self admitted he struggles with the circuit. You know I think he's here. He wants to make sure he represents his finish. He obviously earned his spot. Everyone here has earned their spot. No re no sub-ins, no replacements. These are your top point scorers. These are the guys who have dominated for the last couple of weeks. Um, really, really have done a solid solid bit of uh, racing. And there is actually a, a, an honorable mention of someone who wasn't able to make it. He scored zero in one of the rounds, but won his other two and scored himself the last place spot in this pool. But due to circumstances beyond his control, wasn't actually able to make it for the race. So, shout out to him. Um, trying to remember off the top of my head. Terrible organizer, Richard, that you can't remember his name. Uh, that would be Mr. I Am Goku, Ken Luke. Man came through and did some serious things like I have, I've never seen someone drive. I went and watched his replays, and that's someone to watch. Sean, if he starts racing more in your league, that is someone who you should keep your eyes on there. <laughs> Well, there's a lot of boys on here that I've never met or seen anywhere in some racing South Africa. So it's good to see new names, new fresh guys, giving it a go, trying to be the best of the best in SA, which is phenomenally great, especially from a console point of view. Uh, happily supportive over this. Uh, great and excited to see this. Mm. You know, console racing in South Africa, unfortunately, doesn't get the same hype and exposure that PC racing does. And for me, I, I fall squarely in both camps. But for me, I think yeah, console racing was my genesis. It's where I started. So I'm always, I'm going to back something like this nine times out of ten. And the one time I don't is potentially when it's, I don't know, maybe when it's a, an Xbox tournament because I don't own one. So that would be a little bit difficult to do. Other than that, behind it 100%, you know. Um, so yeah, this is... This for me also, you have to, you can't deny, this is a beautiful game. Like every time, what are we looking at? I don't know, I saw a flashing of a pit stop guy by the name of Kalen Pace. Ooh, did you? Interesting, interesting. P6, where is our man? He is on his way out. He finds himself dropping down to fifth. But, but, as we've seen from his earlier pit stop, he is only half fueled. So to not give much away, I think this man is up to, up to some tricks here. I think we could see something very cool coming out from Kalen Pace. Hmm, that is very interesting. Is he making a move? He has made a move on Monk ZA coming through Forest Cell, uh, through Griffin's Bend. Apar apologies, wrong part of the track. Uh, oh, a flashy, 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 flashy. Not, not happy, and I think that's going to have hurt him enough for Denied is going to potentially be able to make another move. I think he is. A little bit of a cutback, a little bit of an argy-bargy. It's the mountain. A little bit of rubbing is going to be expected. No one spun. No one left the track real good. But Denied seems to have taken back his top five spots, so it's going to be interesting to see when his next pit stop is. All right, as I'm going to drop that tie away and stuff data, we can bring that stuff up independently. Berries still hasn't been able to pull away from Sunburnt, but Sunburnt hasn't been able to completely reel him in. So, are you thinking these two might mirror each other for the next pit stop? I'm thinking that's going to be a safe bet. I think I've lost Sean again. No problem. I'm going to continue on my own. Um... Obviously, this is a bit of an interesting one with how we're doing things, so technical difficulties may arise. We're in the last seven minutes of the race, though, folks. We're in the last stretch of this little, uh, this little sprint out that we've organized for these guys. A little bit of a mixture of uh, endurance racing-style tactics with uh, a sprint race length. Um, 
Berries, at this point in time, getting very squiggly coming onto the main straight. He's going to be hard-pressed to try to keep this lead. Under a second, pulls Sunburnt into his slip, so Sunburnt could potentially have what it takes to reel Berries in completely during this next straight. It's, it's going to be a tough one. Both these guys potentially going to have a lot of pressure on their shoulders right now. Here we go, FZA coming into the pits. That's going to drop him out of the third place slot. And lad, Caelan Pace, squarely, squarely back in that podium position. Honestly, cannot agree with Sean anymore. This is the drive of the day for me. Uh, the guy has done something truly magnificent here. If only he was able to qualify properly. Would like to find out what happened with him there. I'm speechless. I'm still You're speechless. 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 All I'm going is, how? How? <laughs> How? <laughs> I know, right? I'm going to have questions for this guy. Like, why don't you drive like this all the time, bruh? That's three pit stops and he still comes into third place. And he started at the back of the pack and I'm like, how? How? No. Unreal. Unreal. And absolutely. I think we're also seeing a bit of a fire lighting situation here with the Night Prophet. He has not only managed to get past Monk after it, um, KLM Pace made him made it past him, but he's managed to close the gap a little bit on FZA. Which, you know, jumping up and getting into that fourth place slot, I can't say he'd be upset with that knowing going tonight. Well, I, I that is not the outcome I predicted from any given point, top oh, to no. bottom, no to us about it. These boys have been racing very hard, lots of positions swapped around in between each other. We still got five minutes to go, which is what? Another three potential laps? I'm gonna Anything say three. can happen here. Anything. Yeah. Especially where they are now. I think it's three laps is an absolute given, 100%, because they're coming through the final section of the chase. They're now coming through that last section. Murray's corner is just in front of them. Yeah, yeah I, think, I think we're looking at another three easily. Can we not get a hot monitor on these boys? Because I'd love to understand how much pressure they're feeling. How much I'm are they so hard pumping? How much is that blood flowing? Because this is phenomenal. Well, what I would like to do, obviously, as we come into the last 4 minutes, 20 seconds of this race, is whoever does win this, I mean, they're going to be in the l &R. We uh, Worth mentioning, we're using Sean's uh, facilities currently, the Logistical Nightmare Community uh, broadcast channel to bring this broadcast to you. Infrastructurally, it just made sense for the two of us. It's a channel we both share, so this is where we are. But what I would love to do is actually get berries in here. Whoever, whoever does the win this between sunburnt and berries, I think we need to get them into this channel for two minutes just to give a, a, a quick interview about how, how how's the heart rate feeling, how's the how's the sweat glands feeling, and you're sitting in a puddle. I, I, I wouldn't be remiss at that. So let's see if we can make that happen afterwards. I'd love to see if we can do that, man. Yeah. I, I'm fairly sure these boys are hooked up with their PlayStation mic things. Might be a little bit tricky to get them quickly over here, but I think if we ask the question fast enough. Yeah. You can probably jump on you very quickly. Just I'm get gonna, that thoughts from them. I'm going to put the word out, Sean, if you could just give us a little bit of a, a rundown, essentially, of what we've experienced so far. I mean, in this Ford final, it's been, a, it's been an exciting one. Well, from, from start to finish, we had Sunburn eating it off from first place, with him following by Berries. Berries had a bit of a scrap at the beginning of the race. Um, again, fought his way back, and we're still fighting at this moment. Because these boys are gunning it for the victory. Three minutes to go. Besides that, we still had Kayla in pace. It started at the back of the pit. Or back of the grid, sorry. Apologies for that one. And then he has followed suit coming in or potentially claiming the third and final pole position, uh, podium. So that's on up for grabs. The back of the back has always been very dramatic. These boys fought very hard. Lots of driver swaps has occurred here and there unbelievable mr monk over there monk said hey went in for a late pit stop um still fighting for positions and yeah the boys are racing the boys are racing denied profit and monk seem to be having the most colossal night fight they have been on top of each other the whole 40 minutes two minutes 20 seconds to go i this is this is potentially one to watch but this is where i want to keep my eyes on these two are Man, oh man, this is going to be a, a, a race to the finish. Sunburnt has brought himself down to, un, to half a second adrift. Less than half a second as they come in through this first part of uh, Griffin's Bend. So the cutting could this be a where, real show. Yes, this is where it's going to happen. I, I for, definitely foresee a pass coming down the final straight. Um, if not, uh, this is inevitable. If he keeps it cool, calm and collective, that's a sunburnt pass. Um, 
But again, looking at the time, there's another lap. I I can foresee two more this lap and then one final lap. So we're going to end it up at lap 21, potentially. Absolutely. Uh, I think, you know, the pace that these guys bring in, it's we, we, you got to sit here with the calculator and actually say, all right, but these last couple, wah, sit there with my calculator. So, all right, zero. Whew. I think this is actually also where we're looking at maybe potentially where Sunburnt is his strongest. We look at every single section of the circuit, he's quick. But through this uh, downhill part of the dipper, man, he brings it here. He really just brings it. It's smooth, it's connected, it's, it's intelligible shifting. And look at the drive. Look at the drive that he's got now. That delta is closing. And it will just continue to close. That's all he's going to do is close down, close down, close down. Paris has just got one move to stop it, trying to stop it. Nope, that doesn't that. look like it's gonna happen. Nope. Nope, I don't think that's that. I mean, but potentially looking at one more pit stop here. I see how the tire. No, I think the tires and fuel are looking good enough that they'll definitely be able to gun it to the end. But that is a switchover. Sunburn Donkey retakes the lead for this Ford Lockdown Naps 2020 final here at Bathurst using the GT3 Mustang. It has been a crack over race. These two guys seem to not be giving each other any quarter, and I think it's going to come down to the last. I'm not putting money on any anything at this point in time. It's, it's going to be that final last corner. This is exactly where it's going to be. All Berries has to do is do exactly the same tactic as Sunburn did, following up the hill, following down the hill, be with him within a few, within a second, and he should be able to take, retake that position because it's so impossible to defend it coming down the straight. Oh yeah. Once once you have that final bad drive coming through Conrad, it's that's pretty much ticket say you can't Well that looks like it it's it for our back leader pack. Denied Prophet, he locks it in as the race finishes here. Fifth position, sixth position locks in with Monk Z A. Silvermist, he takes the seventh position slot. Vermista, he takes the eighth position slot. Ninth goes to Dynamic, tenth to Caliper. And uh, the Mr. VW, he looks like he's about to finish it off here. He finishes 58 seconds behind our race leaders. So that just shows you the pace that these first guys bring. But the race is not over. We are coming down the, through the dipper now. This is all where it's going to come down to it. Who has that final drive coming through Forrest's elbow? This is cool, calm head. That's all it is. This is exactly where Sunburn Donkey sat. Just a lap behind. So... Is Betty's gonna make a move coming down the straight? Well, I would for sure. So I, I we could see another potential swap, another race leader, and a winner. And a winner. I mean, this is where it's gonna come down. What kind of pace? How's that delta looking? The delta is closing. Berries is leading him in. Sunburn setting up that very defensive line coming into the chase. Is that gonna hurt him though? That's not a quick line through the chase. Side by side, they're going to be going through the final section here. What is it going to be? Oh, we have a race swap. Berries has retaken the lead. This looks like it's going to come down to it, folks. This is bumper to bumper stuff coming through the final section here, the Ford Performance Final. This is going to come right down to it. Sunburn making a little bit of a nose throw in there. I don't think it's going to be enough. I think that this is going to be Berries. This is going to belong to Berries, ladies and gentlemen. We have our winner. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of your Ford Lockdown Laps 2020 final is Berries 150, a man who dominated on the dirt, has dominated in his rounds, and really has come to show a real touch of class in this final. I, Frankly, when we saw Sunburn's original lead, I thought there's no way. I thought there is absolutely no way. There's There's got to be something in it. So get to enjoy a nice little bit of a, a victory shot here. I'm sure he's going to be super chuffed with this. There's... Absolutely phenomenal drive from Berries. I'm busy waiting to see. He hasn't actually gotten my message yet, so I am waiting to see if the guys are able to, um, you know, join us for a for a re for a replay. I would like to or a, an interview as I save my replay because I want that. Oh, I want that race. Um, yeah. That was man. My my pulse has actually gone up a little bit. That was fantastic. That really was something I, quite I'm... something. I'm like, did Sunburn Donkey just made that move a bit too early? Yeah, yeah. That's that's the whole thing. Did he make that move just a bit too early? If he held back one more lap and then stood his grounds, that would have potentially been his. Because all they did was driver swaps, lead swaps in the last two laps. Yeah, I mean, it's it, it came down to strategy, really. I think a, a, 
a consistent nature and just making sure you pit when you need to. And, you know, I truly think that that fuel save early on is what what did him the, the most solid bit of justice for this race. He came in with a good, I think it was about 7% extra fuel than Sunburnt. And just that short, that shorter fuel is what, I mean, it took six seconds away. Six seconds exactly. right off his lead. So, I mean, just that alone is what really clinched it for um, for Berries. It's it's quite an incredible drive. Um, I don't seem to and be getting one, his attention. One, yeah. one also has to think that Monk play into it, man. Because, again, Monk stayed out. And when Monk stayed out, both Berries and, and Sunbird came out of the pits chasing Monk. Yeah. Yeah, they came out chasing him, and that just did them no favours, really. No favours at all. Still, I have to say, good drive from my point of view. I think Berry's topped it by far. Uh, driver of the day, in my books, I'll still say Carolyn Pace. Um, oh. I'm sorry, but the man came from Bath, almost from hero, zero to hero, is, is what I would call it. Phenomenal drive, taking the last podium of the race, also fantastic. Oh yeah, I think uh, driver of the day for me, hands down, Caitlin Pace. I think the most solidly deserved podium. Um, on the note of our top three though, I don't seem to be getting much attention from them in, in the Discord. That's obviously the downside to Discord PlayStation crossover stuff is you don't always get the the desired response. As I say that though, Barry do, Barry's does, uh, where can I see it? I'm just going to quickly do a, a guide into Barry's to so he can join us here. He's... Is there any way, Sean, you as an admin can potentially move him? I don't think that's possible. Uh, I can invite him. Yes, do yes. that. Um, I think I can. Apologies, folks. You know, it's, so it's, not always it's not always the easiest thing getting a racing driver's attention as he's just won a race. I'm sure he's still trying to throw champagne all over his living room and... Uh, you know, hoist his cat on his head as a trophy. Hello, Berries. Man. Berries. Congratulations, mate. 2020 <laughs> lockdown laps winner. How, 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 how the, how's the pulse feeling? My word, I'm shaking right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that was an awesome race. Sure. Yeah, man. You touch a class. Seriously, seriously. So hot on the, on the strat there. That really did you some solid favors. Um, for me... Honestly, huge congratulations. You've been very dominant in your races. Uh, super, super keen to see you win. Uh, so well done, man. Absolutely well done. Otherwise, how's the um, how's the seat feeling? Do you need to take it outside to dry off a bit? Because like Sean and I were saying, oh, the sweat, sweat. <laughs> the sweat that you yeah. guys must be feeling right now. Oof, there was a lot of sweat going on in that race. <laughs> trying Beats to, per minute. Trying it's to all over now, man. Like yeah. Beats yeah. per minute. What is it? It must be hitting 180, 190. <laughs> it's a tr it's a transfer right now. Yeah. So tell me, what was your what was the first thing that went through your mind when you thought that he had that cut back on you when he made that move on the straights that that one Conrad mood? Did you think that was it, or did you think, no, nah, I've still got this. I can still definitely throw something more at him in this last lap because from my side, your guys' tire wear and fuel usage was identical. There was nothing different between your cars, so it really came down to the driver at the end of the day. Yeah, so I knew that I knew that he had a little bit of extra pace over me, especially as one lap pace was maybe three or four tenths a lap faster than me. But I knew that when I was ahead, uh, I could I could hold him back. But the problem is that back straight is extremely long. Yeah. And so I knew he would use that slipstream and get up past me. But once he got past, I told myself it's not over yet. There's one more lap. My tires aren't totally wrecked, so I could still make a comeback and try and do the exact same move straight back to him on that last lap. If I could hold back within the slipstream. Yeah. No, hundred percent. Um well Berries man, from my side, huge congratulations. Fantastic drive. Um really, really well done. Uh you'll be hearing from myself and the guys at Ford regarding your prize and also we want to get some information from you about, you know, full name details and a quote from you regarding your win. Uh, essentially just repeat what you what you said to us. Yeah, so I'll be in contact with you within the next hour or so. But man, congratulations, well done, well deserved. I, I, seriously, I could not be more chuffed for you. Yeah, thanks very much, man. Cool, man. Dude, have a great one. Um, in the meantime, though, we're going to say our farewells. Uh, from me, huge, huge thank you for everyone who, who participated in the, the lockdown laps. Um, I'll do my own social media plugs, but we'll get to Sean first. Uh, obviously, from you, leading the LNR community, guys, now that this is done, can continue their, their racing exploits by coming and signing up with you. You've got lots of stuff happening. Yeah, yeah, look. 
for, from my side, thanks for the invite, man. Um, this was phenomenal to watch. I love watching Good Racing. This was an experience. Big up, thanks to Ford. Uh, Lockdown Naps, you boys have done a phenomenal series. So uh, all I can say is thanks. Um, from my side, guys, if you want good more racing, Eleanor got up and coming things. We new season up kicking off, uh, team versus team, season three. And then within the next few weeks, we will have a set of course up and running season one. So do join us if you want. Uh, that's absolutely correct. Sean and I are currently the, you know, we're making our servers very available for guys if they want to come and give us a shout out, you know, there and stuff like that. But carrying on with the Ford side of things, a massive thank you to them for allowing us to put on an event like this. From my side as the owner of Black Ribbon Sim, um, you know, huge, huge opportunity for us to put on an event like this. We, we are just so excited to be doing more, more to come. Keep your eye on our social media as well as Ford's. Lots of very cool stuff to come in the, in the near future. And then as well, if you want to follow me or Black Ribbon Sim as to what's happening there, Angela Sede is my Twitter handle. Um, Black Ribbon Sim is the Twitter handle there. And then at uh, Eleanor underscore Zede, I believe, is definitely is your Twitter handle. And then easily just searching for Logistical Nightmare on Facebook will get you, obviously, to find the Facebook groups there that once you're there you can find all the information you need find the way to sean's discord and once you're in the discord that's you know that's where you need to be that's where all the information is all the sign up stuff so yeah guys hopefully we're gonna see you out and track pretty soon i'm gonna say my farewells this has been a phenomenal stream super 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 excited to be casting again uh to many many more sean thank you much so much for joining me mate i really do appreciate it from my side cheers thanks for it